we start, um, one of the guys tonight out just a little while ago, we got word rolled one of the trucks and maybe he's has sustained some injuries. So it's Jason. So we want to pray. Can we just kind of lift him up in prayer tonight just to really cover that situation, Lord? We just come to you tonight, Lord. We know that you're a healer, God, that you are at all places at all times. And Lord, we just pray right now tonight that you would touch Jason, touch his body. God, there, there would be not any internal damage at all, that you would just kind of cover him completely, give him strength. God, just touch all the men out there and all the things they're doing. God, be with Daniel. God, as he helps administrate things there, God. Lord, we want to bring glory to your name, Lord, in the midst of it. Lord, we just pray, God, in the, that you would do what you do best, just to take care of your people. And Lord, we just pray for this great man that you would touch him, touch his body, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I know sometimes when we have things to pray for like that, it can feel a little bit awkward going into praise. But you know what? God is God. And he is in charge. And Jason is in his hands. And you know what? There is power in praise. And so don't feel awkward about it, but you just go for it. And you proclaim, like the first song we're going to sing is, um, you, you are God, you are Lord. And you know what? Just proclaim that to um, the heavens, to the earth. You know what I'm saying? So God is good, and we can worship and praise him right now, okay? God, we thank you that you are good, God. We worship you tonight.
to prepare anything at this moment. We're going to get ready to take our missions offering in just a minute. And as we're getting ready for that, I'd just like to ask tonight, I know we're going to have a few hands. Is there anybody with us for the first time tonight in a service? All right. Well, we are really glad you're here. <laughs> to keep getting to know all you guys and gals who are new with us. If you're watching online, we just want to welcome you also. Thanks for tuning in, and we just pray that the Lord blesses you tonight. Uh, but just a couple of announcements. Um, one is that um, and just in case you haven't got signed up yet and you're wanting to, just keep in mind that baptism is coming up, I believe, on the 26th. 8th? 26th. So if you um, are thinking about that, if you have questions about that, you know, let, just go ahead and contact uh, Debbie Cowens and um, just remember that that's coming up. Also, Bible college classes do start this Monday. So if you are wanting to get signed up, you have a couple days left to get that done. So again, if you have any questions about those or you want to get signed up, just uh, get in touch with the, the college office. So. Jessa, will you pray? Thank you so much for today, God. Thank you for every blessings that you've given us. And God, thank you for your goodness and faithfulness in our lives. God, I ask you that you would um, bless each one of the people here. And God, as we continue to worship you, I pray that you would open our hearts to praise you, to adore you, to worship you, God in spirit and in truth. And I pray for the offering, God, that we're about to give. I pray that you would use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Tonight is going to be a little bit of a different night. I'm here to represent our Bible College, Heartland Christian College. And you heard in the announcements earlier that we start classes this coming Monday. But we have 23 traditional students who have already begun their new journey in the Bible College. And they're going to be living amongst us and a part of our church body for several months, hopefully for a couple of years. And we feel as a college that it's very important that you get to meet them. So tonight, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you to our traditional students for this evening. Some of them are a little nervous and are glad it's not a Sunday morning or evening crowd. Some of them have done this multiple times, and so they're just fine. We have been together since Monday, and we pretty much spent 24 hours a day together, Monday and Tuesday and today. We believe it's important to get to know each other, and most of us do not know each other. So we're learning names, and we're learning faces, and we're trying to learn which names go to what faces. And so we've had some fun. We went out on a boat. Some people went tubing. We've done some things that have been a little challenging and difficult, like remembering that you have a buddy and you can't go anywhere without them. That's much harder than it sounds. And we have had great times in the presence of God. Worship has been wonderful. Words have come. There have been altars. And we have been having a wonderful time together. And we'll continue doing those things for the rest of this week. And then Real Bible College starts. And we'll start classes on Monday. So the way this is supposed to work tonight, I'm going to introduce them one at a time. They're going to come up here, and at the same time, their picture is going to come up so that you can see a close-up. They are all really excited about that part. they okay, really excited. So I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to tell you their name and where they come from, and then they picked something about themselves that they wanted to share with you as the congregation here. Okay? Are you ready? Okay, don't be really quiet because they're really nervous and it makes them more nervous, okay? So first, we have Daniel Metzger. <laughs> Daniel comes from right here in Heartland, Missouri, and Daniel has earned 25 medals in track, 20 of them gold medals, and mostly earned in types of relays. Next is Ryan Rogers. Ryan comes to us from the Heartland Men's Recovery Center. That's what he considers home. And as a hobby, he likes to crew hot air balloons. And he's very excited to be a part of the college. Mariana Baron. Mariana comes from the country of Colombia, not the city with a U of Colombia. She wants to make sure you know that. And something really important for you to know, Mariana uses as few straws as possible. And she is always up for an adventure. Next is 
Tucci. Now, Tucci's given name is La Damu, but he goes by Tucci. I'm sure you'll get that all straightened out, right? <laughs> Tucci originally comes from Burma. He moved to the United States and lives in Denver, Colorado. He came here in 2011, and the reason that he and his family had to leave Burma was because at that time where he lived, you had to convert and become a Buddhist or they would allow the army to come in and basically wipe you out. And so they were fleeing from there, and we're so glad you're with us tonight. <laughs> Next is Meyer Malad. <laughs> Meyer is from Minya, Egypt. And Meyer has discovered, since he's been here, that he loves snow and he loves winter. And he first experienced it here in Heartland. Next is Hen Ser Koo. Hen originally comes from Burma and then Thailand and finally, she landed in Omaha, Nebraska, and that's where she came to us from. Hen has been a prayer leader where she was in church in Omaha, and she very much looks forward to continuing her prayer ministry here in Heartland. <laughs> Nick Grissom. Nick comes from Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, and here's something for all of you to know about him. If Nick doesn't reuse a plastic water bottle at least 15 times, he feels guilty. Nathan Grubin. Nathan is from Las Cruces, New Mexico, originally, and he has a challenge. He considers himself the best chef in the Bible College, and he's up for any challenges. Next is Elizar Flores. Elazar, better known as Ali, comes from Little Rock, Arkansas. And Ali wants everyone to know she's always open to meeting new people, but it's often hard for her to make the first move and approach you, so come and approach her. And she likes to babysit. <laughs> Ta K Pa. Ta Ke Pa originally comes from Thailand, now living in South Dakota. And Ta Ke likes to work, and when he works, he wants to get things done. <laughs> Robbie Rodrigue. <laughs> Robbie uh, is from Pierre Part, Louisiana. When he finishes at the Bible College, he plans to get a degree in Christian counseling with a focus on substance abuse. <laughs> Abigail Helms. <laughs> Abigail comes to us from Pittsburgh, Kansas, and Abigail loves children and has served in her church nursery for several years. Joel Davis. Joel comes from Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri, and he likes to write Christian poetry. He'll probably read you some if you ask him. And one day, he would like to teach the Word of God. Lele Wynn. Yeah. 
Lele comes from originally Thailand, now living in Minnesota. And in her Korean Christian Fellowship Church youth group, she sings and she helps the leaders with any needs that they might have. <laughs> Jacob Lickich. <laughs> Jacob comes from Biloxi, Mississippi. Jacob is willing to die to win at any game. But he also cries 75% of the time that he watches a movie. So. Sarah Scott. Sarah comes from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. She's very creative and she enjoys making teddy bears and babysitting. Ryan Hanley. Ryan comes from Kirksville, Missouri. Ryan enjoys reading, writing short stories, babysitting, and playing anything that is competitive. Elizabeth Wilson. Elizabeth comes from Pittsburgh, Kansas, and she enjoys reading and writing stories, and she loves learning new things. Fred Winger. Fred comes from Heartland, Missouri. He's lived in Missouri all his life, so now he's claiming this as his hometown. In the Bible College, Fred is majoring in missions, and he wants to fulfill a life given to missions, however God directs him to do that. Danielle Emerson. Danielle comes from Heartland, Missouri, and she says that she injures herself doing anything she tries, and people often say she's very loud. <laughs> Tu Kiwa. <laughs> we have two twos, so get them straight. Tu originally came from Burma, then spent some years in Thailand, then in 2012, he came to the U.S. to South Dakota. He also came to the U.S. due to persecution in Burma, and he very much wants to say thank you to the United States for opening the way for him to be here. <laughs> Shi Lair Pa. She comes from Myanmar, originally living in Minnesota now. She would like to travel in her future, especially to Hawaii and to Switzerland. Ekase. <laughs> he goes just by say, so that's easier, right? He also originally comes from Myanmar and now lives in Minnesota. He believes that he is very unique in how he thinks, and his desire is to return to Myanmar on mission trips to help evangelize the people who still live there. And that is our traditional student body for the coming year, please. Please get to know them, introduce yourself. If you have a home, invite them over for a meal. Don't be intimidated because you feel like you can't remember a name or a face. They are very gracious while we're learning each other's names and things. So we want to bring them into the body of Christ, but specifically right now, our body of Christ, okay? 
this week, while we are in, I have to keep telling myself, orientation. It used to be boot camp. Now it's orientation. Much softer and gentler, don't you think? I'm going to get this. We have a theme. We have a theme every year when we do boot camp. I mean, orientation. Students, what is our theme this year? This year, our theme is about transformation. And so I'm going to talk to us a little bit about what we've been talking about for the past few days. If you have your Bible and would want to turn to the book of Romans, this is a scripture that we have been chewing on and talking about in several of the different meetings we are in. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. If you've been in church very long, it's probably fairly familiar to you. Romans 12, verse 2. Here's what it says. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So we've been talking a lot about transformation. And I thought it would just be good for the students, as well as the rest of you here, to get a little bit of an object lesson. Do you know what an object lesson is? Raise your hand if you know what I mean when I say an object lesson. OK, for all of you without raised hands, that means I'm going to try to show you something that will help it stick in your mind and remember it. OK? I have been a teacher very much of my adult life, so show and tell is a big thing in my life. All right, the first part of this says, do not be conformed to this world, right? I have some helpers who are going to help me as I talk about being conformed. So if that is you, I've changed my mind, and I'd like you to be station yourself on the stage instead of down there, because people can't see. So conformed people, come right up. There should be three of you. All right, they each have a tube of toothpaste. I know that's terribly exciting. But here's what happens. Being conformed to the world simply means that whatever the world tells me is right, I believe it, and I live that way. That's being conformed to the world. I'm going to give you some examples, OK? The world says you have to watch out for number one. And so when you believe that, and you fall for that, and you live your life that way, it squeezes some stuff out of you, OK? You want to get to the top in your job, and you don't care who you hurt on the way. You need to get an A on that test, and so you cheat, OK? You don't care what happens to anybody else. You don't care. OK, it does not matter. What's important is you and what you want and how you're going to get it. And the world says that's the only way to get what you deserve. That's being conformed to the world. Another way we can is to believe that relationships are built by tearing each other down. Relationships are built by tearing each other down. How many times have you talked to your friend and you make fun of them or you poke at the thing that you know bothers them or embarrasses them or you um, say something mean to them and then you say, I'm just kidding. Anybody ever been on either end of that? You can. The world tells us 
that's how we build relationships, by kidding each other all the time. Did you know that words hurt? Kidding hurts. Always building your relationship on making fun of the other person is not. But th that's what the world says. And it goes back to number one. It's all about me, myself, and I. And so even in my relationships, I have to tear the other person down. The world says that's right. Here's another thing the world says. There is no truth. So whatever I want to believe or decide to believe, that's the truth. If I am wearing a dress and have long hair and all that stuff, if my birth certificate says I'm a girl, but I wake up on Thursday and decide I'm a boy, then I'm a boy. That's my reality, that's my truth. And how dare you say anything differently? Because there's no real truth. Truth is whatever I decide it is. And I might change my mind tomorrow about what the truth is. The world tells us that's how we're supposed to live. The world tells us that, and it squeezes the goodness out of us. Another thing that the world says is, if it feels good, do it. If it feels good, do it. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Don't worry about what it might be doing to your body. Don't worry about anything. You are your own person. Get it with all the gusto you can get it with. You deserve it anyway. That's what the world tells you. And I'm telling you, that's why some of you are here. It's what the world says. One last thing that the world says, success depends on how much money you have and how much power you have. That's how you determine success. How powerful are you? And how much money do you have? And so every decision you make in life needs to either get you more money or get you more power. That's what the world says. So let's look at these lovely things. How many of you want to look like that? Or, or show, demonstrate that beauty? This is what the world wants to do to us. When we conform to what the world says, that's what we look like. Thank you, you can crushed, that's good. Thank you, you can have a seat. Now would my <laughs> trans, would my transformed helpers please come? On the other hand, the scripture says, don't be conformed, but it doesn't say just sit around. Don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your life. Here's what transformation does. Rather than watch out for number one, when our mind begins to be transformed, through the work of the Holy Spirit and having Jesus in our life, we begin to have a new order. Instead of me, myself, and I, it's God, others, and self. And so the Holy Spirit begins to blow in our lives, begins to blow and fill us. Instead of relationships are built by tearing each other down, relationships are built by showing honor to one another. And we begin to be renewed and filled and changed. Instead of there is no truth, so whatever I believe is my own truth, I begin to develop a biblical worldview, and I stand on absolute truth. And I don't care what anyone else says. 
And when I begin to function that way, I begin to be filled and transformed and changed. Instead of if it feels good, do it, I begin to exercise self-control in every situation that I'm in, no matter what my craving might be, no matter what my friend might say. And when I begin to exercise self-control, I feel myself beginning to get filled up. And the Spirit of God begins to live on the inside of me and transform me. And last, I begin to understand that success comes from walking whatever path God calls me to walk, no matter what the result looks like. Perfect obedience is great success. And when I reach there, I have a filling and a passion, and I am changed and transformed. Now, toothpaste to two people. I want you to come and stand by them. You don't need your plate. Just bring your toothpaste thingy. So we have really a very easy question to answer. Which do we want to look like? Which do we want to look like with our life? Let me tell you what happens. When this happens and we conform and we end up looking something like this, it's because, did you, did you watch them squeeze that out? It's because the pressure on the outside is greater than the pressure on the inside. That's why it looks like this. This, do you know why it looks like this? Because the pressure on the inside is greater than the pressure on the outside. That's transformation. That's what transformation is. Thank you. Y'all can have a seat. Now I want to show you one more thing about transformation. If you'll let me get my handy dandy bag of tricks here. This is milk. This is chocolate. So I need a helper. I want to be transformed. Okay, I want to be transformed. Turn this way so they can all see. I'm the milk. And so I decide I'm going to start going to church. So just pour it straight down in there. That's good. So I'm going to church. Okay, then I decide I'm going to start praying three times a week. Pour some more in there. Prayer's good. Get a whole bunch in there. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. I am going to make a prayer closet. I have a real closet at home. I'm going to clean it out, and I'm going to pray in that closet on Thursday mornings. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to learn a worship song. I'm going to learn a worship song. Get that in there. Okay, that's good. You did very well. Thank you. So here I am, and I have all that good stuff inside of me, and I'm transformed, right? I'm still milk with a bunch of stuff on the bottom. 
not quite, I look a little different, right? What's going to transform this into chocolate milk? You want to do that for me? Look, you didn't know you were going to get to be a magician tonight. Stir it really, really good. For that milk to get transformed, it has to get stirred, or else all of that good stuff, and it was good stuff, just sits there and it's useless. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't look nearly as good as chocolate milk. But when it gets stirred up, it's transformed. It's completely different. Now, it's the same way with us. The Bible tells us you have to stir up the gift that is inside you. And so the Holy Spirit is going to come and do his part. God gave us the Bible so that we can learn and know, but we can't just sit there. We can't just sit there. It takes action. It takes doing. It takes something on our part so that we'll be transformed, so that we'll taste good to the world. That's what transformation is. It's changing our mindset. It's letting the Holy Spirit come and do a thank you. Come and do a great work in us. And then it's doing our part in stepping out and doing what He asks us to do. He wants to transform us. No matter how good you are tonight, or no matter how bad you think you are tonight, we all need to be transformed. And here's the good news. He's in that business. That's what he wants to do. It says we're changed from glory to glory. And so whatever place you find yourself in tonight, God wants to come and he wants to transform you. So before we end tonight, I'm going to ask you, if you would like that process to begin, maybe... I'm not saying, do you want to get saved? Uh, that's, to me, a given, okay? You want to get saved. But you know that you need a new step. You know maybe God's been talking to you about something, and you just don't even know how to do it. So if you feel like you're in a season where you want transformation from that white milk to this chocolate milk, to all those things that the world tells you are good and right, but in reality, you're going to end up looking like those tubes of toothpaste. If you don't want to be a tube of toothpaste, then you've got to be transformed. You've got to be transformed. And if you've taken a step and you feel there's been great transformation, I'm telling you that's not the end. Mr. Ebear, how old are you? 91 and a half. Are you done being transformed? I'm certain not. It will be going on maybe for eternity. I'm pretty sure when I see the throne room of God, there's going to be some transformation going on. I think it will go on for eternity. So just really quickly, if you would like a touch from the Holy Spirit, to put you into overdrive, to begin to do a transforming work. I'm just going to ask you to stand where you are. The Holy Spirit loves people to come to him and put a call on him and ask him for something. So we're just going to raise our hands and we're going to ask him. And I'm asking you to ask him. So out loud with your voice, out loud with your voice, begin to ask him, Holy Spirit, come right now, Holy Spirit. Begin your great work of transformation. Come on, guys, you can do it. Pray out loud. Ask him with your own lips. Holy Spirit, come and begin to transform my life. I don't want to buy into what the world says is good and right. I want to hear you. I want to know you. 
I want to know what you're saying over my life. I want to be transformed over and over and over again. Don't ever let me be content where I am. Oh, Holy Spirit, and help me to stir up what's on the inside of me. Help me to stir the gifts that you put there, God. Come right now. Come and touch us and help us begin this journey of transformation. Show us, Holy Spirit, where we're thinking like the world, where we're believing what the world is telling us. God, we don't want to be tubes of toothpaste, but we want to be workers in your kingdom, and we need your power. We need your transformation. We need to hear your word, and we need to move forward. So begin your work of transformation. We are waiting and we are ready. And God, we will put into action what we hear you say because we know transformation comes from us moving in what you say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you come and speak to our hearts. Thank you that you open our eyes to see where we're being fooled by the world. God, continue to do that. Continue to let us know where we're being fooled by the world and believing lies. We give our lives to you tonight. We give them to you. And we say, do what you will and transform us over and over again. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And so be it. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening.